<laughs> Boom. What do you think of that then, huh? That's a picture of me giving you the middle finger, or as Americans might say, flipping the bird. This gesture is considered offensive or demeaning to the receiver across the Western world, and its usage actually dates back to ancient Greece and Rome, where the shape formed by the hand was meant to represent a phallus and testicles. Bang, how'd you like that? That's a picture of me giving you the V sign, or as Americans might say, well actually they probably wouldn't have too much to say about it because it doesn't have the same meaning over there as it does here. Yes, in the UK and countries such as here in Ireland or Australia, this gesture is as offensive and as commonly used as the middle finger. To help understand the connection between these countries and why this gesture might be shared between them, allow me to illustrate the history from Britain's point of view. Hmm, that looks nice. I'll be having that. Hey, what's this shithole in the arse end of nowhere? I have an idea, why don't we take all the people we don't like from here, and also here, and throw them over there and just sort of see what happens. Now only people we really don't like, the dregs of society, the criminals, I'm talking murderers, rapists, people who stole bread to feed their families, just throw them all in there. Actually, there's already people living there. Fuck them. If you're not familiar with this as being an offensive gesture, allow me to provide some humorous examples. Box art and promotional posters for movies and games sometimes have to be changed across regions for certain reasons. For instance, the 2006 game Bully, which is made by Rockstar and is similar to their Grand Theft Auto games, but the main character is in boarding school, caused outrage in the UK because it was seen as promoting bullying. The game was still released in the UK, but under the name Canis Canum Edit, which is Latin for dog eat dog. The 2008 game Left 4 Dead features a zombie's hand on the cover. The hand is holding up four fingers, which makes sense, Left 4 Dead. The problem was the 2009 sequel, Left 4 Dead 2. Same idea for the box art, only this time the zombie's holding up two fingers. Once again, it makes sense. Only there are two covers for this game, because when it was released in the UK, they had to flip the hand around, so it wasn't making the offensive gesture. During World War II, the Allies adopted the V sign to signal victory. British leader Winston Churchill was often photographed giving the sign, but initially the upper class aristocrat would display it with the palm inward, unaware that this was offensive. Eventually his aides explained what this meant to the lower classes and he promptly stopped doing it like that. So what makes this offensive? Where did it come from? And this is where things get interesting. You see, it's commonly believed that the V sign gained its offensive reputation in medieval times. During the Hundred Years' War between England and France that raged from 1337 to 1453, the English were famed and feared for their longbowmen. The longbow was six foot long and could deliver an incredibly powerful shot to pierce through the improving armours of the time. The downside of the longbow was that it required a great deal of strength and stamina to draw. The estimated draw weight of the medieval longbow was at least 81 pounds of force, and could have even been more than 130 pounds. To be able to quickly and effectively fire arrow after arrow would have required extensive physical conditioning, so much so that archaeologists can actually identify the skeletons of these men because they have enlarged left arms. Their left wrists, left shoulders and right fingers would also often feature osteophytes, aka bone spurs. But even the most experienced longbowman would only fire about six arrows a minute. A faster rate of fire would simply exhaust the man. So the longbow is a pretty impressive weapon that required extensive training to use effectively, but resulted in an elite fighting force. You'd think then that these archers would have been in fairly short supply. I mean, how much does it cost to train such a man? Well, for the English, these archers were actually pretty cheap, and they were mostly low-born commoners. The thing was, the average English man of the time would have already had experience with the longbow, because it was legally required. Dating back to at least the 13th century, there were laws that promoted the training of longbow. Different types of sports were also prohibited, so if a man wanted to use his free time for games, he'd better be shooting arrows. In 1511, Henry VIII even passed a law requiring all men under the age of 60 own a longbow and practice shooting regularly, so the English had a whole population of longbow men. This might explain the widespread use of the V-sign among the English. So feared were the longbow men that it was believed that if taken prisoner, they could expect to lose two fingers at the hands of captors, so that they may never operate a longbow again. It's thought then that under this belief, archers would taunt oncoming armies by giving them the V-sign, basically saying, I've still got them, you motherfucker, and then letting loose some arrows just in case the message wasn't understood. Really, they were displaying that they could still pluck you, and maybe that's where the meaning of the gesture comes from. It's a fascinating story, but 
Well, it's just a legend, unfortunately. There's no evidence that confirms this is where the V-Science offensiveness comes from. Here's an archer in an old manuscript who appears to be making the gesture, but it seems more likely he's just instructing these fellows to shoot the target. Another knock against this story is that a longbow is best used with three fingers, not two. So if that's not the origin of the gesture, why did I waste your time telling you? Well, first of all, if you think learning about medieval warriors is a waste of your time, well, maybe you're right, but I pity you. But the real reason I told you is because we actually don't know where it comes from. The Archer story might be our best guess, even if it's not confirmed. The first confirmed use of the gesture dates back to 1901, when an English iron worker can be seen giving a cameraman the fingers to indicate his disapproval of being filmed. So it's at least a hundred years old. Another theory about the gesture suggests it originated in English playgrounds, evolving from the gesture of thumbing one's nose or cocking a snook, where the thumb is placed on the nose and the fingers are waggled. If this evolution occurred just a few generations before the filmed 1901 usage, this might explain why the gesture is used in the countries it's used in, as the British would still have had influence over them during this time, but not countries like the US, as they'd been kicked out by then. The truth is, we'll probably never know for sure how it started or why. Isn't that funny? The users of the V-Sign all agree that it's offensive, but we don't know why. I don't know why I'm using it other than to offend you, and you don't know why it's offensive, but it is. Now we must fight about it. To Americans, it's just a backwards peace sign, not offensive at all, until you lick your tongue between the two fingers, but at least we know what that means. So my American audience can rest easy. You don't know what the V sign means, but neither do we really. But thanks to this video, you can now avoid accidentally getting yourself in trouble when you're abroad. Or you could surprise some locals by showing them you're well versed in the English technique. I bet they'd be even more surprised if you're able to remember this video and tell them the backstory to their own insult. So if you think anything in this video has been valuable to you, why not consider subscribing to see more from me in the future. You could also join my channel membership and get perks like unique emojis and badges, which makes me more likely to see your comments. And at higher tiers, you can even get a sneak peek at what I'm working on before I release it. And if you just want to watch videos, you're in luck, because I have a lot of them, so go crazy. See you next week.